Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to take this stone, put it in the water, and pull out valuable artifacts like these. Stay tuned, because you're not going to want to miss this one. Right now, we're standing on the banks of the Ohio River in northern West Virginia, below flatland above where Native Americans lived for thousands of years. And under the dirt where they lived are valuable artifacts. And every time this river floods, it goes up on this bank and knocks chunks of earth off of it. And in that earth are these valuable artifacts. And in these floods, these artifacts slide down this beach until they get to the low water level right here. And then they stop. And then they just go back and forth right here in the slight water fluctuation in the waves. And the only problem with getting these artifacts out of here is that they're under this sand about a foot deep laying on the hard packed clay. Now you could get a sifter and a shovel and go down this beach and sift all that, but that'd take months and who got time for all that? So I found a way to bring the artifacts to me. It's kind of like fishing for artifacts. Now among these valuable artifacts are some least desirable artifacts like these here. This is an ancient campfire stone. It has come out of a campfire of a Native American. It's red and fired. These things are everywhere down here on the beach. And that's what we're going to be using as our bait. All right, let me gather up a few of these stones and we'll get started. Now you want to bring your stone down here to the water and just give it a little wiggle and work it down in the sand like this. By tomorrow, this stone will be sunk down in the sand, resting on the base clay with all the valuable stuff. Now, when a lot of guys go arrowhead hunting, they say they ask for the spirit of the native to bless them with a nice artifact. Now, I don't know about all that. So I thought, you know, well, let's just put it to a little test. Here we have just a regular old piece of concrete, 1985. And we're gonna put that in there with the artifact stones just to see if there is anything to this mojo thing. Hey, we got all of our stones and our concrete chunks in the water. Now it's just a waiting game. Be about two weeks for me, two seconds for you. Let's do some time traveling. Holy crap, we've ended up in the ice age. We gotta get more speed. Oh, we made it. Oh. Dang! Whew. Who put that stick there? All right, let's go down here and check our stones. I had to give them a couple extra days. That'll be good, that'll be good. We got our shovel here. We're gonna locate our stone, dig it out of there, see what we caught. There's our first stone right there. And there's a bunch of crunchy stuff around it. This might be good. There's our stone. We're gonna take the rest of the stuff that's down in here, put it into our sifter, and see what we got. We got us a killer in here. What happens is, when this water level fluctuates up and down, and with these waves, it moves all the smaller stuff under the surface on the clay, but the larger stuff stays still. And these waves don't come in straight. They come in at an angle. So it keeps the stuff kind of seesawing like this. And everything that gets caught on that larger stone that doesn't move just stacks up around it to a certain point. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at this killer. It's just here. There's a few things of interest in here. Let's pull that nice one out first. Oh man, what a nice one. Very nice dart point. Now this is not an arrowhead. This is a dart point. Darts were a lot longer than arrows and they were thrown instead of shot with a bow. Now I made a little crude example just to show you what I mean. This is an atlatl that I made. Whipped it up real quick. It's about a two foot extension. Excuse my crude dart. And the end would have hooked in here like this. 
and then they would go hunt and have that into position ready to throw at any time. Now they always kept this hand out here, see? I don't know why, maybe I has to judge the distance. I would have made a good caveman. And they used this technology for thousands of years before the bow came along. And the correct term for this is atlatl. A lot of people call them addle addles. That ain't right. We also got a couple other things in here. Now there's a couple brokes. One, two brokes. Can't all be killers. Look at this. Now I find a lot of these down here. It's just here. It's a nice one. It's a piece of rubbed hematite. And you can see on this one, they were trying to get that pigment out of there. And they rubbed that thing clear down to the metal. Look at that. Trying to get those little pockets of pigment out of there to use as paint. You know, at this point, I find so much of this rubbed hematite down. I'm convinced these people just painted themselves red from head to toe. Okay, let's go dig out our next stone. Stone. There's another stone in here. Oh, it's a nutting stone. It's a nutting stone or a pitted stone. Look at the size of the hole in that. It's fired red too. So it's been in a fire, campfire or something, and nobody knows what these uh, pitted stones were for. They were either a byproduct of doing something or they were a tool themselves, but nobody knows. But that's a nice one. You ain't gonna believe this. We got three things in here, and one of them would have been a killer. Look at this. It's just there. Look at this monster. It's got a chip out of it right there. But the base and the tip are all there. Another dart point. And I think this may be around the Adena culture, a woodland piece. Probably just a few hundred years before the bow came along. Very nice one. Now here's a little tool or something. I don't even know what that would have been. It's all there. It's a complete tool. Uh, here's a pottery shard, piece of ancient pottery. I don't find them very big down here. Looks like it was broke recently right here. Maybe I did that with a shovel. And another hematite faceted stone. Yeah, that one's got a really nice facet on it. They rubbed that flat. It can still see some of the abrasion marks on top of it too. Let's go dig out that other stone and then we'll get them concrete chunks. I had to come back get my camera over here. Oh, we got a couple points in this one. Look here, here's a shell. That's definitely old. You can tell these old shells, they start wiping off on you. Here's a whole one down under here, just there. It's all there. This one would have been really nice, but it's got some uh, bottom damage. And here's a little bladelet. And these would have just been snapped off a larger core of flint to use as a little uh, quick knife. This one's got some edge work down this side right here. Oh yeah, we're finding all kinds of cool stuff today. Look at that. Kind of reminds me when I was a youngster hunting for this stuff. The good old days. Hey, what'd you find, Scotty? Uh, I found an arrowhead. Okay, let's go dig out that concrete now. Just to see if there's anything to this uh, spirit of the native stuff. Concrete chunk. <laughs> you all ain't gonna believe this. Oh, it didn't break. Look at this. Now I can use this stainless steel digger with the Kung Fu grip. Nice. I'm praying this ain't chipped or anything because I got four more like it I dug a couple years ago. If it's not, I got five now. Oh, man. It's an 1890s inkwell. Oh, you can see bubbles in the glass. It's a Carter's ink. Very nice. Dug a bunch of these a couple years ago, four of them. Now I got five. And one mason jar lid. 
And like I say, I usually don't go in for that superstition stuff, but well, I'm kind of starting to believe that now. And the moral of the story is, if you want to find an old artifact, you got to use an old stone. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. We'll catch you on the next one.